James Pope here with Corelight. Let's learn about Zeek using AI. First thing I want to do is let's just see if we can. Can I call you Jordan? Of course, you can call me Jordan. Sounds great. We're off on a good start. Jordan, what is Zeek? Zeek, formerly known as Bro, open source network security monitoring tool. I'm not going to read everything in here. Zeek operates. Uh, by passively monitoring network traffic and generating detailed logs of network activity, including protocols, HTTP, DNS, SSL, et cetera. So we see that we have uh, network traffic coming in and it's being kicked out and generated to detailed logs. So let's ask Jordan, what is the most common Zeek log? One of the most commonly used formats in Zeek is the con.log. The con log is a connection oriented log that contains information about each connection that Zeek observes on the network. It provides a bunch of information. So over on the right hand screen, if you have noticed, we have a Corelight investigator up and running. And what we're going to do with that is let's go and actually look at these things in real time while we're asking it questions. So I just have an open query right now, it just has a date. And we can already see that we have these paths and the paths have a bunch of different logs in them. We see that con log that we're referring to. We see the HTTP that I also referred to and a whole bunch of others. What we can do is we can narrow down in on just that path. So we can click on that path. Let's do a fetch more. And actually let's do a group by. So we see everything that's in here and let's close that out. And you can see we have lights still going, but 55 different paths. So there's a whole bunch that are in here. We're going to narrow down in just on that con log that we're looking at at the moment, the most common Zeek log. And let's go look at some things inside of here. So we see that we have our source, our destination. Over here, we have including the source and destination of IP addresses and ports and the duration of that connection. Over in Zeek terminology, our source would be a originating host. So ID, O-R-I-G-H, that's our originating host. And then we have our responding host. So that's our source and our destination. And then originating P for port and the responding port P as well. We see a whole bunch of other information in here. UID, community ID, VLANs, bytes that are being sent across it. And we also see this con state. Con state equals REJ. So let's learn a little bit more about that. Let's ask Jordan, what is the con state? use for the con state is in the con log which we're aware of it's used to track the current state of a network connection as it progresses through its life cycle so what it's doing is it's tracking the flags such as sin sin sent sin accent established closed fin sent reset among others by tracking the con state z can provide insights into behavior of connections so you can look across lots of different con states and quickly identify what happened with this traffic. And in this case, we see that it was rejected. It came from this dot one to this dot 64 and it was rejected. Let's scroll up and see if we can find some other ones that are interesting in here. We have an SF. So SF would be, it starts with a sin and ends with a fin, an established stateful connection. One that we see a lot is an S0. So we could even just ask it like, what, what would, and S zero B. So that says we have a connection attempted, but was unsuccessful and not completed. So it wasn't rejected. It was just not completed due to a timeout. When a client initiates, initiates a connection to a server, it sends a send packet to the server and waits for response. If it never receives a response, then it times out. So something where a sin is going across and there is no response to it, that would be a S zero connection. All right, so let's pivot over. Let's, we see these UIDs and everything that is over here in our sim. So let's ask it about what is the UID? Uh, what is the UID used for? All right, in Zeek, the UID is a unique identifier field that's assigned to each connection and it's a string value. The UID remains constant during the state of the connection. It allows you to take that UID and you can correlate events across multiple different connections and logs. So perfect. In this scenario, we see our path con and we see a UID. What we can do for any one of these is we can take that UID and we can go search on it. We can remove our path con or we could just do that as a path star. 
to look at all of them. And we can see if there's any other logs associated with that connection, that original path con that we found that might've been interesting that we wanted to know more things about. We went and looked up that UID and said, go show me everything else associated with it. And we also see a DNS connection. So we can narrow in on that DNS connection and we can look at what's inside of that. So the UID allows us to stitch multiple logs together. Back to this con log for a second, we see this community ID, but I don't have enough information about that. So let's ask it about that. Actually, it didn't even bring it up. So let's call it out on that. Isn't there a community ID in the con log? I says, yeah, correct. There is a community ID in the con log. The community ID is an algorithm that was developed that allow, it's a hash based algorithm that allows you to take the, essentially the source, the desk, the ports, and it creates a hash of them. So we could even ask it further. We could even uh, ask it, how is a community ID calculated if we wanted to know more about that? If that community ID lets us take our five tuple, our source, our desk, and our ports and create a hash off them, what's the value of that? So let's ask it, what other non Z tools support the community ID? So besides Zeek, what else is a community ID good for? And the community ID is an open standard and it's gonna start listing out a lot of the tools that use a community ID. So Suricata, Bro, Zeek, Security Onion, Moloch, Elk, et cetera. It can be used in lots of different situations. We use it in this environment to pivot between Corelight network logs and CrowdStrike EDR logs. I did mention some other logs and a second ago I showed you that DNS log. So let's ask it about that. What type of information is in the DNS log? In Zeek, the DNS log captures information about the domain name system, and it includes things like timestamp, query ID, response time. Really the big things that you're going on out of DNS is what that query was and what the response was. So let's go take a look here on the right. Uh, we happen to have one here, so let's click on DNS. So right here, our query, is looking for eastuscloudapp.azure.com. But if we wanted to look at more things, we could just even do a path equals DNS. We can go look at all of our DNS. And in any one of these scenarios, we could go down and look at any of the answers and questions that were asked. So let's narrow in on this one just randomly. And let's click on one of them. We see we have a, a query. We're looking up who is play.google API. And we see that we have a lot of answers because that could have load balancing, could have round robin, could have lots of scenarios, but we have a lot of different answers to that request of uh, where that belongs. All right, so I have, I'm more of a security focused person. So let's take that a little bit further. Let's say what type of security questions would the DNS log answer? All right, so we're spitting out our preamble. Are there any DNS queries responsive with malicious domain names? As we just saw that we can look up what a FQDN replies to, that could be useful, especially if we're going back and uh, retroactively looking, did anybody ever hit this domain? We could go back and look. Looks like another uh, example here would be um, responses that indicate exfiltration. Other things could be DGAs. There's a lot of other answers here as well. But let's move on. It also talked about an HTTP log. So let's ask it, what type of information is in the HTTP log? And while it's answering that, I'm going to change my path over here to HTTP. And let's just pull open one and look at it. So inside of here, we have all the header information that exists. We have our originating host, our responding host. We have our URIs. We have what version, we have the user agent that was associated with it. We have our response port. If by chance they're doing something different than port 80, could be interesting. We have our method. In this case, it's a head. We have our response, our status code, which is a 204. If we were to just go on this left-hand side and look at all the potential things that are in our HTTP, there's a lot, our methods, our hosts, any post bodies that might be associated with it or potential encodings that are inside of those, request body lengths, 
And we also have the accept language. If they're, you're looking at anything that's besides uh, English or you're looking at any foreign countries, you might have different accept languages that are inside of that. All right, so let's ask it the same question. Let's say, what type of security questions can you answer with the HTTP log? So same, we can see any uh, malicious URLs or domains. If there's any type of data that's going out, any request to sensitive resources or data, it's going on. Really, the high level of HTTP is if it's all clear text, you are a malware author, whatever you put into any of these fields, you can shove anything in them. You can exfil data over them. You could have it do check-ins. You could have it do C2. As long as a server on the other side is expecting it, you can put other things in here. So it's always good to go look for abnormal things. If you had uh, a user agent there that was just said ghost or something like that would be of interest. A user agent that equals security researchers names or other tools that exist on GitHub. If you saw a bunch of just status codes that were 400, but the bytes are changing, could be interesting as well. Let's ask Jordan about files. What about files in Zeek? What log or logs? would we have record of files and aptly named we have the files.log so let's change our path from http to files and we see that there's a bunch of traffic in here and some things that are inside of there it'll also tell us our source our desk it'll tell us the protocol that it came across if it was http or smb it'll tell us the file path file name it'll have a hash for it if we wanted to look that up in our favorite tip or virus total and let's just go down this left-hand side of a few things that are in here that might be interesting. Again, the hash type, we have our MD5 hashes. We have our MIME types. We have this FUID, which I will ask Jordan about here in just a second. We also have a SHA-1, a SHA-256. We have the host that it's coming from, being sent to, transmitting hosts, and our receiving hosts. So that one's slightly different than the originating host. In files, it is a TX host and an RX host. So let's ask it about what is the FUID used for? The file unique ID is an identifier that is used in the files log, just like the UID that allows us to go to multiple logs. The FUID allows us to also go across multiple logs where that file exists. So anywhere where that file exists, we can take that FUID, we can do a must equal match. And then we can change this path to equals path equals star. And we can see all the other places that that FUID was a part of. In this case, it was just in the files log. But if it was in lots of different logs, you would also see it in HTTP and S, et cetera. Earlier, it mentioned SSL a few times. So let's ask about that. The SSL log, does that include TLS? Yes, the SSL log in Zeek includes SSL and also TLS. The SSL, so even for encrypted in traffic, we have a lot of information around the certificate. So we can go and look at that. Let's go pivot over here and let's look at SSL. And let's go see some of the information we can see even about encrypted traffic. So we can see things about the chain. We can see things about JAW3, JAW3S. This would be a hashing out around the cipher and suite that wraps it up into the client side, JAW3, and the server side, JAW3S. We have server names, we have SNI match certs, we have validation status, we have protocols, as I mentioned, all the ciphers as well. Those are all included in there. It didn't mention, but I want to ask it, what is the difference between the SSL log and the X509? Log. And while it's doing that, let's pivot over here and type in X509. You can see we have this path X509. And we can see some additional fields in here. We still have things like curve, but we also have a bunch of additional information. We have certificate validation, start date, end date, serial numbers, subjects. There's a whole bunch of additional information around the certificate that is included in the X509 log. Something that's also really powerful that I like with ChatGPT is you could say I am sending Zeek data into log scale, which is what we're using over here on the right, Corelight Investigator. It's built on log scale. What 
are some examples of queries to best use Zdatic. Like, tell me some ideas. And I type out sending, but I'm going to leave it. Jordan's going to solve it for me. Uh, the really nice thing is they will just start throwing out these these queries and not that they're perfect, but they give you a really good start on some of these things. Obviously, if your your source, you might have to tweak that based on whatever you're incoming your data in. In this case, is eat con. Ours is just con. So we can just do a path equals con and then start the rest of this. But in any one of these things, you can just take it and it has really good like examples and queries of each one of these things. And so I find that really useful to give you ideas on queries, and especially if you are getting used to like a brand new SIM, maybe you've never used log scale or you've never used Splunk or Elastic or whatever that might be. These are really good starting points to just start looking. And if you don't, if you have a question, like why would this matter? Why would somebody want to do this? And of course, it's really good at telling us a bunch of the reasons why. All right, that wraps up our intro to Zeek Logs using AI. Hopefully that empowered you with a little more knowledge about Zeek, use case of how you can use that to go and look for that data in your environment and maybe some things you would go look for and also empower you that after you finish this uh, you can go try things and if you have some questions this was the free chat gpt this is not even a paid version uh, i'm not going to say it was perfect in every answer or that it got 100 percent right but it it led us into a lot of very correct paths to ask additional question additional context and we were probably in the 90 ish percent right and I just had to suss out a few more uh, pieces of uh, value and fields from it. But with that, go forth and Zeke.